Hello boys and girls, my name is Olli Huttunen, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to open Gaussian splatting point cloud files that you can now export from Polycam or Luma AI services and open them in the original SIBR viewer. This viewer software is developed by the INRIA, the same computer science institute that originally have developed this whole 3D Gaussian splatting method. And if you have already calculated and trained these Gaussian models locally on your own computer, you're surely already familiar with this viewer, because it is the first software with which it has been possible to view 3D Gaussian splatting models at all. So this tutorial is going to be a bit of a hack and requires some skills and courage from you to use command prompt and to that extent this is designed to work only in Windows environment. So let's get started. At the very beginning we need to create special folder structure. First create a folder on your desktop for example and name it to describe your own Gaussian model. Then inside this folder create another folder and name it as point cloud. It is important that it is exactly in this form with the lowercase letters and a space replaced by an underscore character. Then take your splat PLY file that you exported either from Polycam or Luma AI services and drop it inside this folder. When file is in there, rename it also as a point cloud, so that in the end you have a point underscore cloud dot PLY file in this folder. Then return one step back into the root of your first folder. Now, in here we are going to need a special kind of a configuration file, which is named CGF underscore arcs. But where can we find this, or how can we create one? At this point this tutorial now splits into two parts. If this SIBR viewer is already familiar to you, and you have already trained Gaussian splatting models locally, keep watching, you very likely already have these config files on your computer that we can use. But if this viewer is a complete new experience for you, and you have never used it before, you can go directly to this point in the video. I will show you where you can install the software and where you can get the necessary template to use it. So, those of you who have already calculated Gaussian models with INRIA's original source code, go to the output folder where the pre-trained Gaussian splatting models are stored on your computer. When you look inside any of your models in there, you will find this necessary type of configuration file. Take a copy of it and paste it in here at the root of the folder you made at the beginning. Now you can run this new model folder in SIBR Viewer as before, and it should open like any of those other pre-trained models. The only difference is that new PLY files open in a reset camera placement, but you can rotate and navigate in the model normally. You will also notice the difference if you change the render mode to initial points. It will show you a 3D point cloud model from the source where you borrow that configuration file. If you have difficulties and cannot get SIBR Weaver to open, you can check the settings in this configuration file by dragging it to the notepad and see if this URL path is correct. It should point to a folder where the original converted data is located on your computer. Make the necessary changes and save the file and then try to open SIBR Viewer again. It starts working when the settings are in order. But now let's start from the scratch and see where you can download and install this SIBR Viewer. 
You should go in the GitHub where the Indrias original source code repository for Gaussian splatting is located. The link is in description. In there you should search Windows binaries. The download link is placed in the middle of this documentation. After the downloading, open the zip file and place the viewers folder, for example onto your desktop. Next we will need the template file which I have made for this tutorial. It is also a zip file and you can again find the link in the description of this video. Unzip it and place the GS template folder also onto your desktop. In here you will find a folder named data. Take a copy of it and paste it in the root of the viewers folder. Then go back and this time take a copy of this zfg args config file and paste it into your GS model folder that you created in the beginning. Now you should have the point cloud folder and this important config file next to each other in the same folder. Next we will see how we can launch the SIBR viewer with this new Gaussian model. For that we need to open a command prompt window and the easiest way to get that is to type cmd into the windows search field at the bottom. It is this black icon here. In a command prompt window we are going to type a few very simple comments. First type cd which means change directory and hit the space after that. Then open the viewers folder from your desktop and find the folder named bin in here. Now if you drag this into the comment prompt it will write the URL of this folder for you and this way you don't have to write it yourself. It saves time. Hit the enter and you'll move inside that directory. In this directory we will find the needed executable file that can be opened the viewer. We can easily search it if we just type first SIBR and then hit the DAP key few times so that the SIB Gaussian viewer app.exe is displayed. If we now hit the enter it will show us all the parameters that can be used to launch this program. From this list we can see all the necessary parameters marked in green and that the minus M parameter is needed to open the model from a certain directory. So we can now repeat the same command if we hit the up arrow key and then hit the space and type minus M after the exe file. Then again we are going to take advantage of that dragging trick and this time we drag the GS model folder in here so that we get the URL to the folder which we created in the beginning. And now just activate the prompt window and hit the enter. If everything went well it will open the Gaussian model inside the SIBR viewer. This viewer consists of a few floating menu windows and this main view where the 3D model is displayed. This is not a very user-friendly application, but it is possible to learn to use it if you just boldly press the buttons and try everything. Here are some tips to get you started. By default you are in FPV mode and the navigation in the model takes place from the keyboard. If you are a gamer this first set of WASD keys are familiar to you. By pressing those you will move forward, backward, left and right. In addition to that there is another set of keys I, J, K and L. That kind of turns your head. With these keys you can look up, down, left and right directions. By using these keys simultaneously with both hands you can move and rotate inside the model. And if we also add the keys Q, E, U and O, we get more features and are able to rise up, and down 
and roll left and right. So navigating with the keyboard is a bit like a flying a drone or handling a PlayStation controller. But then there is also the trackball feature, which makes it easier to rotate the 3D view with the mouse. You can enable it from this drop-down menu. Here the model rotates when you drag the pointer in the middle of the view. Then a red ring will appear in the middle of the screen. If you drag the pointer outside the ring, you can roll the view right or left. And when we drag with the right mouse button, we see this red square. It means that now we can pan the model and slide left and right up and down. By dragging the right mouse button outside that square, the view will zoom in and out. Now that we know how to navigate, let's quickly see some other features. If you have a high resolution monitor and the text in the floating menu seems a bit too small, you can make them bigger by choosing this option in the menu from the upper left corner. High DPI option under the display menu will make the font size bigger and the text is now much readable. In this 3D Gaussian floating menu there is this slider called scaling modifier. Dragging this slider to zero value, you will see how the individual splats are scaling down in the view and show how this point cloud is made. This is a very cool feature and you can even record this effect when you make videos out from this viewer. So, at the end let's see how we can record our camera movements and export them as a video files. In this camera point of view floating menu, we can first set a little bit the speed how fast the camera will move and rotate. These values can be set in here. I'll put the moving speed at the value 0.1 and the rotating speed in a little bit higher value at 0.18. Then I check the option save video from playing and hit this record button. So I start to fly with my camera and because I made those speed settings so low, I can make very smooth camera movement and I have plenty of time to think which direction I will move my camera next. So I fly and move my camera for a while all around the model and try to find interesting angles and cinematic camera runs. When I'm done, I press the stop button. This is perhaps not the most logical thing, but now I have to press the play button and look through the recorded camera ride one more time. During this playback, I can change now this value of the scaling modifier and the scaling effect of the splat will be recorded in the final video. I can do this as many times that I want while the playback is running. And when the whole round has come to an end, again, I select the capture from the top bar menu and from there the export video option. Then I just select the folder where I want to save the video, write a name for it and then it is done. SIBR viewer will start to process the video stream and it'll take a while to create the video into the mp4 file format. And that's it, now you can watch the fresh video captured from the viewer. If you need the video to be in exact resolution, there is a parameters which you can type in the command prompt before you open the Gaussian model. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was interesting to you and that you now have basic understanding how the SIBR viewer works. If you like this video, hit the like button and as before, subscribe to my channel. We will see in the next time. Thanks for watching.